and uh, O.J. Simpson in the studio this morning. O.J., how are you today, brother? I'm fine, Bubba. Just been traveling all night. A little tired, but... Uh, you only got about four hours sleep. <laughs> yeah, and if I got that, yeah. Now, supposedly, you're looking at places in Miami. Is that, uh, was that, is that Can we talk about that a little bit? Or? Yeah, I'm, uh, I will this summer be moving to uh, South Florida. Really? And uh, I'm up here with Emmett and, and uh, Court. I uh, was looking for a Cato. And these guys look like Cato. And Hamill uh, looks just like Cato. In fact, Hamill is OJ. your new Cato. Can we get a koozie, OJ? Koozie, hey, brother. Hey, in fact, Hamill could be your new Cato if yeah. you just put a blonde ass uh, surfer yeah, wig on him. Yeah, we got to put a wig on him. I'm going to uh, caddy for hey, him today. And you're going to have to like decrease your intelligence level by a little bit because Cato wasn't he was he wasn't the, uh, the 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 sharpest knife of the day. Let me tell you that right now. He well, most he most people think I was. I, I didn't really know Cato. Cato you really was somebody didn't? I knew for a few months. Right, right, and. Um, I thought he was a pretty nice guy. He was an all right guy. Is, I, very, you I really saw him. You got to be that smart to clean your pool, though. <laughs> you, know what I'm you gave you gave uh, you gave Cato a few uh, few. Hey, Cato, I need the leaves clean out of the out of the out of the gutters. Uh, there's a few little water bugs in the pool. Now, uh, bitch, start cleaning. <laughs> Boy, that was a whole big. And when he got on the stand, they 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 killed him. I mean, that wasn't even it wasn't even like he didn't even have a chance. I mean, they they killed him. Well, I thought he did pretty good though. Yeah, well, we <clears throat> all thought Cato was the type of guy who will say what they wanted him to say, and he say what we wanted him right. to say. He's basically, uh, a, he tried to be non-committal and he tried to be honest. And Marsha obviously didn't like that because she right. made him an adverse wit- witness while right. he was on the stand. But I don't know. I, I wish him all good luck. Was it was it uh, when you were there and, and you were watching Cato testify? I mean, was it was it uncomfortable for you at all? Well, the whole experience was uncomfortable. I got Cato was sort of a relief because uh, when Marsha, it wasn't I recall, all medical and technical. Yeah, it was all yeah, you know, yeah, Cato. I, I just love when Marsha asked him, "Well, that was OJ. Uh, did he seem happy that uh, you were going to McDonald's?" Uh, with you, he says, "Well, wouldn't you be happy? <laughs> <laughs> We're getting a happy meal, bitch. <laughs> We're getting some McNuggets." It was, it just it was a, a little comic, really. You know, I had I, you know during the whole ordeal, well, the most televised thing in my lifetime, the most biggest media event. You know, when you, uh, in the in the media, it was a circus. I mean, it was a circus, yeah. and, and everywhere, everywhere you go, OJ, it's a circus, and it's got to suck a little bit. I mean, you know, you go golfing. It's a circus. You go out and, uh, and and try to take a nice fine lady to dinner in Miami. It's a circus, yeah. and I felt for you every day, having to get up in that monkey suit and yeah. I, I, and be all prim and proper every day. Meanwhile, being housed in jail and having to go out there every day for over was it about a year? Uh yeah, about I was uh I, I was incarcerated for sixteen months. And I mean, it had to suck in ed. solitary confinement. I might add, and I'm a talker, so it was pretty tough. You know, <laughs> I was, to I was talking to the rats and to the my, I mean, to the cockroaches. Could you yeah, talk I was to naming them. them. Would they allow you to talk to anybody, Juice? No, I was all alone. I never spoke to another prisoner, so it was sort of funny when you would see these guys getting out on the news and say, yeah. "Oh, I was in the cell next to him," and OJ oh, said, yeah. you know, "Exactly." I, I never spoke to one other uh, inmate when I was there. ever, ever. Now, were the guards pretty cool to you? Well, I, uh, what happened was some of the guards were pretty cool right away. And um, some of the guys weren't so cool, but <clears throat> right after the uh, police officers testified in the trial, right, uh, all the guys got cool. All the sheriff's guys got cool because they knew. I mean, they would say to me, "We don't know if you did it or not, but those guys are are lying, are crooks." <laughs> so from that point on. Uh, um, as far as the guards were concerned, uh, it was pretty cool. They they were pretty nice to me after that. And you know, it was it was amazing how National Enquirer and Globe mm-hmm. they would they you know here you are and you just said that you never spoke to another inmate, but meanwhile they'd have some Joe Blow who got out on battery charges saying, <laughs> "Yeah, man, me and OJ best friends, bitch. We used to play cards." <laughs> he was he was he was all right guy. He was yeah, he's, pretty nice. Yeah, he's pretty cool, man. I don't think that bitch did it. No, he didn't do it. In fact, he told me he didn't do it, man. I know he did. In fact, he signed like you know nine hundred baseball cards for me. I'm going to go to flea market sell them this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> and meanwhile, you didn't have contact with anybody. No, but that that type of stuff happens all all the time. I I think what bothers me more than anything is today. Now the media uh, guys don't really know the case and stuff, and they they're hosting someone on their shows, and they almost make up evidence and they make up facts. Yeah. Uh, uh, and, and sometimes it's humorous. I I was watching a show in L.A. when they were reported I had just gotten married. Right. So they and you have they actually no no. <laughs> so they actually had a. Uh, they showed a plane flying. They had a map and showed the plane going from L.A. to Miami. <laughs> then they interviewed two people at the airport in Miami saying that, well, Paula Barbieri met him here, and they ran into each other's arms. And then they showed a map of the plane going from Miami to the Dominican Republic. And they <laughs> so were they interviewing. All these big-ass graphics yeah, and stuff. Yeah, graphics, and they were interviewing these guys who were speaking Spanish. Right, right. And they had an interpreter, and they were saying how we were at the same house that Michael Jackson and uh, – uh, uh, the Presley Lee, girl right. spent their honeymoon, and they were right. explaining how they saw us up on the 
uh, pool area, and this this whole report. And I'm sitting in L.A. Right. Saying, Jesus, I didn't realize I wasn't even invited to my own wedding. <laughs> <laughs> and they're showing big ass graphics with yeah, a plane yeah, it's, it's flying amazing. down and and all that kind of stuff. I don't know if you heard me talking earlier. And they come up with all these statistics how, uh, you know, 80% of America doesn't like you and, and uh, 80% of America is appalled by you. And, uh, hey, you know, it, it's amazing, though, but there's 150 or 175 or 200 people outside your hotel room today. Well, everywhere I go, I run into that 20% that likes me. <laughs> <laughs> because it, it's, it's, it's a phenomenon. Yeah, because coincidence? Because <laughs> the 80% won't sack up. They're afraid of you. Beat him down. My boy Juice is still athletic. Yeah. Now, oh, you know, a lot of people don't know. That OJ played for the New Orleans Saints. That had to be no, painful. No, no, I played for the New Orleans Saints. I thought you played for the Saints. Oh, season, you know, I played for the Bills, and then oh, I finished and my Fran. career with the 49ers. Yeah. That, you know, I got a card. Yeah. I got a, a football card. I think it might have been right when they traded you yeah. that uh, they had you in a, like a, a gold helmet, uh, but it didn't have a 49ers emblem on the side yeah. of it. Did you ever see that card? Yeah, like right here. Uh, yeah, I've seen a few cards like that. What, what they do is the people who are doing the cards, they don't want to pay. Uh, you know, they don't want to pay the NFL properties, the whatever the rights are. You know, right, right. For, for, so you you'll see Joe Montana often doing commercials, uh, and he'll have a uh, a jersey on, but the stripes on the sleeves won't be the official 49ers stripes. You know, how much uh, how much did they allow while you were incarcerated, OJ? How much did they allow you to sign? I know that that was a big. I mean, the the brokers while the whole thing was going down, it was. I mean, it was a feeding frenzy to get OJ signed stuff, and I mean, on on all the all, remember sports memorabilia auctions. You know, the prices were crazy. Yeah. Were you actually signing a lot in jail? Well, I did, did an awful to? lot. I did an awful. I was a way that I could pay some of these expensive lawyers. I had a few uh, expensive lawyers. God. I might add. Uh, yeah, Damn I did OJ. an awful lot, and it was great because it gave me an opportunity to get out of my cell. Right, right. You know, it's pretty tough. They let you out of your cell to do that? Yeah, I would go into the attorney room and be <clears throat> in another cell. <laughs> right, right. But, you know, you're in a, you're in a like, a six-by-eight cell uh, 24 hours a day, right. 23 hours, basically, right. a day, and... Uh, uh, it, it got pretty tough at times. Now, but you know, fortunately, I had the Lord on my side, and it kept me strong. How about uh, the brown bitch? They tried to like try to uh, bombard you on. Was it the King Show just recently? Was it the no, no. Was? What happened was they had been calling me on a show uh, on Fox News and uh, asking me to call in. Right. And they mm -hmm. had a few people that I knew, a lawyer that I knew on, and asked right. me to call in. Normally, I would have been on the golf course. Right. Uh, but you golf today? Was, uh, I golf last yesterday morning. Lt. Right. Lawrence right. and I. Lawrence kicked and my Rosie? butt. And Rosie. Uh, no, Rosie doesn't play golf. He doesn't? No. Rosie, needs to. Yeah. Needs, needs to play some golf. A <laughs> boy no. needs to get out there. Yeah, Bill T and I played in L.A. yesterday. He was out there reading for some movie parts, and right. we were on the golf course at 5.45 a.m., I might add. But in any event, this guy, it was so typical of what I hear all the time, uh, was talking to Denise Brown, and they had a lie detector test a guy on named Ed Gelb, who I've never met. Right. And uh, this guy started spouting facts about my testimony. And he said something like, oh, well, O.J. testified that Ed Gelb hooked him up to a machine. Then he turned to Ed Gelb and said, have you ever hooked a guy up for a practice run? And Ed said no. So he used this whole hypothesis, and he says, well, O.J.'s lying. Because if he testified under oath that Ed Gelb hooked him up to a machine and he only did a practice thing, and Ed Gelb is sitting here and say he's never done a practice thing, well, obviously he's lying. Well, I've never met Ed Gelb, and I certainly never testified that this guy hooked me up to a machine. So I called into the show to tell this guy right. he was, uh, once again, he was he was just being dishonest. Right, right. Uh, to prove a point, you know. And uh, then Denise Brown said a few things Yeah, to me she got and, crazy, uh, man. I must admit, I had a little fun kind of dog. No, you was fun. <laughs> and you know what, OJ? In my opinion, I, you tore her apart. Yeah, yeah. I know, but OJ, you need to do more of that. You need yeah. to stand up and say, listen, bitch, I'll, that's crap. Yeah, well, you, uh, you know, you I want, am the going. The bottom line is you wanted the uh, Los Angeles black snake like every other freak did. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, Look out, and, guys. And, 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 no, but you, I mean, you know what? Bottom line is, you know, you're a freak, and you try to freak it, and, uh, you, know, you're, you know, you're trying to, at my expense... Uh, sell your propaganda yeah. and turn a tragedy into a money making experience. And, you know, you got a shady, not you, but her. She has a shady background at best. And, you know, I'm not going to have you on the TV here, propaganda, not, you know, undoing all this crap. Yeah. So I'm going to stick up for myself. And, Juice, you need to do more of that stuff. Stick yeah. up for yourself and not let these people beat you down. Well, you know, mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't bother me, to be honest. If anybody's been around me, they see my kids are happy. My mother's healthy, and that's all that matters to Sydney me. Sydney and Justin. Yeah, Sydney and Justin are doing terrific. I mean, they're now they're how really old are they? Well. One's thirteen. No, Sydney's fourteen. Now. Fourteen. Well, tough boys are coming around. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, yeah. And, you, know, and, you, know, you know, Justin will be twelve uh, next month. So, 12 and 14. But they're doing, they're doing terrific. The boys really are going to start are. coming around. OJ, you're going to have to get a little bit defensive now. It's your girl. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I know. <laughs> like, you know, Hollywood, Hulk Hogan is one of my best friends. Yeah. And I uh, hang out with him a lot. Host the mania. Oh, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, he, uh, running wild. Oh, he's and you know what? He talk about a great guy, man. Yeah. And he calls the show a lot. He's in L.A. right now. As a matter of fact, got a he got a big place in uh, West Lake. Oh he's, yeah, very nice. Nicely, very, yeah, it's right where a couple of good great golf courses are out there. The Shark Shootout used to be at a place called Sherwood. That's right out in that's, West Lake. Now, where's West Lake in retrospect to where you live, O.J.? Is it, uh, it's about it forty-five takes, minutes man, from actually, the city. Actually, I played that? golf there the day before yesterday. It takes yeah, most people forty-five. Took me about twenty-eight minutes. Right now, where are you living now? You living still in the Brentwood area? Kinda? I still, I'm still in Brentwood. You in know, a condo? the media said I was already in Miami, and people didn't want to sell their houses to me. Oh, and you're all about you know. They got never, you. I never put a bid on a house. So, yeah, the, the media. <laughs> well, the media had you buying a house down here for the longest time. Yeah, I know. I and know. then they got you dating about seventeen white bitches in Miami. <laughs> yeah. And any girl who cuts her finger in Miami yeah. or gets a black guy, OJ yeah. did it. Well, I mean, a couple uh, of weeks ago, some I, bitch a couple of weeks ago, twisted her ankle like scroller blading, and all of a sudden the juice did yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, example: A couple of weeks ago, uh, my girlfriend met me and some friends for dinner, and then she drove home and had a flat tire and had to walk back. Juice did it to the hotel, a mile and a half. Right. Back to the hotel, right? And they wouldn't give her my room, so she was pretty upset and kind of said some things to the people. Sure. The next day, I come off the golf course. The media is all over the place, and my girlfriend beat me up. Right, right. <laughs> there <laughs> you go. Your ass and on then, the of course, tire. of course, the National Enquirer took it a step further. Sure. As I was getting on the plane two days later, I saw on the front page of the National Enquirer, I beat her up. <laughs> they probably had you all doctored up with black eyes yeah. and all kinds of stuff, didn't they? Yeah. Well, no. the good thing is, uh, you know, the good thing in my life is every girl I ever dated. Doing this ordeal, they all stood strong and they all right, spoke right. well of me. And they not one a, person, not one girl, said I was a bad guy. And I don't think too many people uh, can say that about their exes. <laughs> well, no, and only that, OJ. But uh, you know, every girl has to realize that when they date you, they're automatically in the spotlight, and yeah. everything they do, if they have, if they're three days late on the period, it's going to be on National Enquirer. <laughs> You know, OJ and this girl's going to have a three-headed alien child. (laughs) And, I mean, they got to realize that they're instantaneously going to be in the spotlight. And, you know, all the girls that you've dated have seem to have been pretty strong. Yeah. No, they all have been. I mean... They went now, back you were dating like a Playboy 70s. model for the... OJ, I'll tell you something, brother. People can say what they want about you, but you pull some smooth bitches. I mean, where do I sign up for the OJ Simpson pulling smooth bitches program? Because I uh, need to find... You always got hotties around. Yeah. Now, who's your latest? Can you talk about your latest or oh, no? Yeah, I've been dating a girl for... Actually, I was with her for two and a half years, and nobody knew it, so there was no news about it. Now, how the hell do you keep something undercover yeah. for two and a half oh, years? You know, I kind of live a pretty low-key life now. Uh, but basically, once it got out in the media... Uh, it went crazy. They were chasing her, and her mother then went on TV and oh, said some negative things. What, what was interesting about her mother is that for two and a half years, every time she came to L.A., her only complaint about me is that I wouldn't take them out dancing. <laughs> you know? And, you and then once the media got on, got wind of it, and people were saying, what kind of mother would let her daughter, as if a mother has any say on who their daughter is exactly. at date once they're over 18, uh, uh, then it became, once again, people coming around offering money to write uh, books and uh, do. do shows. And what's interesting about the writing books is the Cole's two best friends, Susie Keel and uh, and um, Cora Fishman, the two girls that she spent most of her time with, Cora every day, people came to them immediately for books. And, and my ex-wife also for books. But once they started writing them and it wasn't negative, the book deals went away. Oh, so, soon, now, so as soon as the deal went down... Nicole's two best friends were offered book deals. Yeah, and but they, they said it, what them, you guys are saying is not true. Right. Uh, those so as soon book as book deals they started being positive on the deal, yeah. and they couldn't throw a whole bunch of me. dirt crap in there. The, You've the, never seen the, the people closest like, to us We're not going to do book. the books. You, if you notice the people who wrote books, <clears throat> who did write people books, like Faye Rusnick and yeah. stuff, Faye knew Nicole for about a year. I knew right. Faye for maybe 10 months. I can count on my fingers the time I saw her. Right. And yet she's, she's writing books about book. our 17 years together and right. actually tried to write two books. The second book didn't do much, but um, now the first those book are the people really didn't they want to hear. Much, did it, OJ? I really don't know. I, didn't, I, I had to read it because right. when it came out, it was the middle of the trial, and Edo stopped the trial right. and had us all go read the book. You're kidding me. Yeah. Now, see, I didn't know that. Yeah. So when Resnick books ca- book came out. I was forced to read it. And yeah. I mean, Edo actually mandated, go read it. That's right. Well, for what premise? Just I don't know. It's, it's because... Uh, because he wanted ju- a vacation. They were concerned that the jury on their weekends uh, in the malls saw the book, oh. and and there was a lot of talk about the book, and everybody said, read it. So I had to read it. <laughs> actually, actually, you know what? The biggest question of all, OJ, is remember when uh, Shapiro came up with the envelope, the yeah. sealed envelope, and he said to the media, this will be... Now, what he actually he said... This this will be the evidence that sets OJ free. This will be the evidence that no. sets OJ free. And, of course... Everybody wanted to know what was in that damn envelope. <laughs> I mean, it could have been, you know, nothing. It could have just been a blank piece of paper and said, you know, hey, Edo, your your horse's ass. Yeah. But I mean, well, uh, well, what was it? Can you can you say well, what, first what it was? First of all, let me say, Edo <clears throat> screwed us on, on that because what had happened was um, they had uh, when they, they had a guy named Camacho 
on the stand saying I had bought a knife. And of course, the type of knife I uh, allegedly bought uh, became the exact kind of knife that allegedly <clears throat> ca- killed these people. Right. You know, the testimony, even though the art, the guy who actually did the autopsy said it was two knives. But of course, they made him go on vacation exactly. and they brought in Lakshmanan to do the testimony because they didn't want him on the stand. First time in history that that uh, mm. that a guy who did the autopsy was available and they didn't use him because he went against what they were trying to perpetrate. Well, in any event, I knew the item that they were talking about and I knew where it was in my house. And it really became a little dr- dramatic because we had to put the the uh, police officer who had searched my bedroom on the stand, right? right, and asked him where did he look? Because if he said he looked in this place and didn't see it, of course it would look bad for us. Right. But fortunately, and you knew where it the, was. Yeah, we knew where it was. And what we did when I told my lawyers, wait a minute, I think I still have that thing, and told them where it was. Right. And they got a retired judge to go get it. Out and of your put house. It in a, yeah. And While we were, you're incarcerated, so yeah. this judge is going to your house. House. He looked at the place. I told these guys to look, got it, put it in an envelope so that during the trial, after they had one, <clears> went down this road about this particular knife. But you didn't want to expose the fact that you had it. it to them yeah. until they yeah. made it horse. It was never unwrapped. Them. The thing was never unwrapped. Right, right. Well, in any event, we had it. And Edo in court one day said there's a package that so-and-so and so-and-so. And it really, mm-hmm. bo- it really blew it for us. Right. Because he alerted them that this item might be there. And you may have noticed when the trial started, not the pre-trial, all that, that Camacho guy and all the talk about this particular purchase of a knife disappeared. But we it sort of hurt us because we wanted them to go down that road. You wanted them to go down this make-believe yeah. fairy but, but tale let me road. Tell you, let me tell you the real uh, dramatic part of it is <clears throat> they got this guy on the stand. And we asked him, did you look here? Did you look here? Then we asked him, when he looked in the vanity, did you look behind the mirror? And he said, no, thank God he said no, <laughs> because if he said he did, then it would have appeared as if uh, this item was placed there after, Planet. you know, yeah, but it wasn't, you know, and uh, of course, you know, once, once that was exposed, that whole part of there, just like the Bronco <clears throat> chase, you notice that never came up in the trial. Yeah, why, because, did, why didn't it ever come up, OJ? Because they liked the fact that the media had said I had $8,000 on me and right. all of these things. Trying I had $3.65 on me. As a matter of fact, when I got out of jail and, and the verdict came in, they took me back to the jail to give me my personal items. Right. And I'm standing there looking at them saying, hey, there's only $3 here. I read all these reports that I had, I had eight, eight, grand. eight grand on me. Where's my eight grand? <laughs> Where's my $7,900 balance yeah. at? Yeah. But that, okay, that they, once now, again, was the media screwing me. How bad, OJ? On the on the Bronco chase, did yeah. the media report like we like you said the eight thousand dollars was one of the worst you know prefabrications. What yeah. else? I mean, well you know for, you know as I said I, I remember you, this they one had you guy in the, the back team. with a gun to your yeah. head and all yeah. that well, stuff. Well, some of it I did have a gun and I was pretty <clears throat> despondent. I yeah. might say that. But what had happened is I told AC to take me to Nicole's grave. You know I was they had me on some medication. Right. I was never a guy that took a lot of medication. They gave me some antidepressant stuff. Right. Which I now know, didn't find out till later, it makes you more depressed right, right. the first couple of days you're on it, right? So you're totally so all screwed. of this stuff is going on, and I just did not remember the funeral or anything. And I right. told AC to take me to the gravesite, and I, I was pretty despondent. But right. when we got there, there were police officers there blocking the entrance. So we went and parked, and we sat there, and I was listening to the radio, and AC got out and took a oh, wow, right, excuse right. The expression. And while we're there, I'm listening to the radio, and I'm hearing Dan Rather, I think it was, saying things like, um, Oh, yeah, apparently the police had been to O.J.'s house for a domestic thing on seven or eight occasions, which was a big story then, which is absolute BS. Right, right. <laughs> you know, the police spent oh, miles were, with domestic stuff. They were just stuff. trying to set the foundation So they're making up. it like that O.J., this was regular, that he beat his wife and all right, of this. Right. This is absolute BS, you know. So I got a little mad, and A.C. got mm-hmm. in the car, and, and when we started heading back, he called the police immediately. Right. I have O.J. He's in the back. He's defunded. He has a gun. I'm bringing him back to his house. Right. Well, then— about 10 minutes later, we had helicopters and everybody oh. chasing us. And it, they tried to make it sound as if I was going to run somewhere. Like, I can run somewhere. Right, right, exactly. And that I had a disguise and all of this. And oh, I'm remember, saying, they came what, out with what, you I mean, had a private jet waiting gas yeah, up on the, yeah. on, the, on, the, on, the, on the executive airport. I, and I have a were... friend named Donnie Sofer living in Miami right. who, uh, who has a boat, Miss Turnberry. Mm-hmm. And the police were all over him. <laughs> you know, uh, was the boat waiting to take O.J. to some island somewhere? You Fly know, to Miami, get the boat, all, just, go to the Bahamas. Yeah, they just create all of this stuff. And unfortunately, it worked for them because they knew the jurors, mm-hmm. the prospective jurors, would have heard all of this 
before they got sequestered. Right. And of course, when they got sequestered, I assumed they were going to bring all this stuff up and we can explain to the jury that none of this is true. Right. But of course, they didn't bring it up. You know, it would have been, I know that you're, I know that the lawyers did it for the right reason yeah. because uh, by not putting you on the stand, yeah. and, and, you know, and it, when it worked out. But you know what? God, I wish I could have had you on the stand because America wouldn't be as tainted as they are. Don't you agree somewhat, O.J.? Yeah, well, to, to, a, to a degree. What I would say to my I mean, lawyers legally, throughout the trial. They did the right job. They did the right yeah. thing. Throughout the trial, when they would say stuff about my personal life or my relations with Nicole, I'd say it was not true. And Johnny and Shapiro then would all come to me and said, O.J., this is a murder trial. They want us to go chase that stuff. we got to focus on the facts and on the murder trial and not on all of this other stuff. And when you get out, you can rehabilitate your right. Your life, Just you because know? your feelings uh, happen to get hurt yeah, while in the court yeah, those doesn't mean th- you necessarily got to get up there and defend yourself yeah. because th- if, if, if the, the, the defense may just try to kill you. Yeah, but I was taking the stand. I was, I was going to, as Lee Bailey tell people, he was taking the stand. But what happened was they went so long. Now, here we are, and, and we're down to two alternate jurors, and Edo brought us all in one day and said, we're going to lose this jury. You know, if this goes, we have to get this trial over. If this goes much longer, we're going to lose this jury. Um uh, so we said, we asked, uh, we told Garcetti, okay, if the jury goes below 12, we'll continue. <clears throat> Will you guys continue? And they say, no. If it goes below 12, they're going to call, they're going to say it's a mistrial and I'm st- sitting in jail. And do it again. Johnny Cochran tells me he can't come back to the trial for another two years. Uh, well, all my lawyers got other things and I got to be in jail the whole time. Right. Uh, so I said, no, you know, uh, then we said, if you took the stand, the trial is going to go another month. And they knew that, too. It would go another month if I took the stand. Plus, Johnny and all of them felt that they didn't prove a case against me. And right. there's no way you can be convicted on what's out there. So we had to say no. Now, Juice, when – when you, now, you had to be. I mean, all of America well, – I mean, God, everybody can sit there and tell you, like, like where they were when the verdict came down. Yeah. I was – my big ass was just getting out of my pool, and I was sitting at the well, – you know, I was all wet and stuff, and I'm sitting on my leather couch watching it. And I'm thinking now. I was in front of a jury one time on like a like a defamation of character kind of gimmick and make. I wonder what. <laughs> make it put up some. Make it put up some cops. And then, you know, I was like, I called some cops. Some oh, wow. That he was a dick, and I hated him in the whole nine yards, and he was a you know jabroni. And so I was in front of a jury one time, and I was sitting there nervous, you know, nervous to hell, and you're afraid we're got to come up with all this money and stuff. I can only and I when when you stood up. And they were getting ready to read the verdict. I was thinking, God, can you imagine what's going through this poor guy's head? I'd be dying. OJ, what was it like, like literally 30 to 40 seconds prior to them reading the verdict? Did you have any, like a lot of times, good lawyers like the dream team that you had, they can give you an indication on basically they got people reading the jury. They got all these statistics. Did they give you any indication when you were getting ready to hear it? Did they take you aside? Did Shapiro or did Cochran take you aside? Hey, say, hey, Juice, I think it's looking good for us. Did they do that for you at all? Uh, no, but and I, mm-hmm. and I also think I was a calmest guy there because I had already accepted that, you know, I didn't do this. If I'm convicted of this, everything I believe in, God and thing didn't exist. I mean, I right. just, so I was pretty calm. Uh, to, to digress a little bit, after the police, after the Furmans and the Van Adders testified, virtually every deputy, sheriff's deputy in L.A. told me, hey, Juice, you're going home. Right. Because jurors, when they know cops are lying, don't convict. Right. So they all pretty felt that way for six months. Most so you're of, getting a little bit of that info. Of, yeah, and that was from the, all the sheriff's guys. Even some of the guys who I knew didn't, didn't like, like me when I first came in. That's so they all felt that good. way. Yeah, So by, but what had happened was the, the day before, uh, we were still there going looking at things, and Johnny <clears> and everybody had taken off. And I was still in the back room, uh, and one lawyer, Carl Douglas, was there. And out of the blue, we hear the jurors want to see some information, right? So we had to come out there, and all the other lawyers were gone. They brought, they brought uh, Marsha them down from upstairs or whoever was there, and they asked for a readback. So they did readback, and they went back. So I'm ready to camp for another two weeks. In you know, jail. And I figured that would be tough time. But the next thing I know, uh, Carl says, OJ, they got a verdict. You know, this is like two hours, three hours after the trial. And you weren't expecting and that I was, at all. And I hadn't even been taken back to... <laughs> back to main jail, yeah, and I was still in the court, little court cell. There. Right, right, right. And we didn't expect it. And Carl said, "Well, you're going home because they didn't have enough time to go through. If they you, if you're <clears throat> one, if you're convicted, then you have to go through the degree of it." And he felt it wasn't enough time. So I they felt, knew based on how fast the jury came back. Like, man, brother, they can't. They that's what he felt. But nobody anything. knew. But that's what they felt. And right. I was concerned because what they asked was a <clears throat> this guy Alan Park. Right. They they wanted a read back of Alan Park. And it upset me. I actually had an argument with Johnny that night because I thought Johnny, in his closing um, um, summations, 
I wanted him to talk more about Alan Park, who seems to be a nice guy, but this guy's this guy's perceptions, he was a limo driver, were right. all off. <clears throat> yeah, if you may have mentioned, if you may have recalled, he said there was two cars in the driveway. Well, we know there wasn't two cars in the driveway because his limo wouldn't be able to drive through. And he saw my daughter's car in Marsha Clark's office. And all the pictures of my driveway, if you recall, were taken the next morning. Right. And there were two cars parked there. So I said, well, that was off. Plus, he also stated that when they were asking him about my golf bag, uh, he said that, um, well, it was a Swiss Army golf bag, but that's not the one in the courtroom, which is, to me was a little dramatic, uh, implying that I had changed golf bags. Yeah, switch. Well, Swiss Army knife, I was on the board of the company, had only ha- made about eight of them, and two weeks previous, they had sent me this one. Right. So it could have not been any other Swiss Army golf yeah. bag, because these were the only ones in existence. And I wanted Johnny to point that out, because it's some of this guy's close. perceptions had been wrong, and when the jury only asked for some of his read back, I didn't know if that was beneficial to me or not. And, and, all, and all, so all that the, was the only thing that had me nervous. And all the all the read back they could have got, gotten, they only wanted his. That kind of stream, see, yeah, as yeah. long of a trial as that was, was. Yeah. And all they want is one person's read back. Yeah. And they come back in two hours. I mean, yeah. now, so when you're standing there, Juice, you're standing there. I yeah. mean, what was going? What was going? I, to be honest with you, I was as calm as you can be. If if, if somebody asked me where I ner- I wasn't nervous. Not at all. I was, I was, you know, and it was. And you're like, a cool brother. Let me. Yeah, the only <laughs> thing I was trying to not to do. My biggest concern was, uh, I, w- I, I, I had hoped obviously, and I, I felt in my heart I, it had to be not guilty because I was innocent. Right. And my thing was, I was trying not to attack Van Adder. He was in the courtroom there, and I said, physically, I went through, yeah, he was physically there. Yeah, he was there. I mean, you were going to attack him physically. Yeah, and I was saying, you're beat his I ass. said, I went through this entire trial with some dignity. I didn't go crazy at, in times I wanted to, but this guy was the reason I went through this ordeal. He and Furman, well, in my mind, these were the two culprits why I went through this ordeal. I do feel in my heart that they felt I was guilty, and they enhanced evidence, you know, uh, like EDTA. I know he planted blood everywhere. Now we know you cannot scientifically, the scientific uh, community has proven it since my trial, that you cannot have EDTA in your blood. Your body does not process it. So how do they explain EDTA being in the blood in the sock? And I, I'm a firm believer that if they would have tested those blood drops, they would have found EDTA in all of them. And, uh, and you remember Marsha Clark in closing arguments says, so what? There was EDTA in the blood in the socks. It's in the food we eat. It's in all our blood. She said that in closing and arguments. it's not in your well, blood. Well, today... It's scientific fact that your body does not process it. It cannot be in your blood. You know? So it was planted. So it was planted, and they knew it was planted. Now, so when you talk about being pissed off at, uh, at uh, this gentleman, yeah. I mean, physically, I mean, I mean, oh, you, yeah. you got to— That, that mean, was my you, biggest concern. That was what be, I was trying not to not do. Not to beat his ass. To stay—I said, I, I've done this whole thing with some dignity— don't lose it now. Don't and beat this guy. I was ass. looking at this guy over there, and I wanted to get him. <laughs> I mean, you're literally tw- you're literally 15 feet away from yeah, him. Yeah, I wanted to get him, and that, I, that was the, the hardest thing for me to do. For you to go up there and give him a big chokehold, WWF yeah. style with a big elbow, that yeah. would have been kick ass. <laughs> right when they said, hey, okay, here, OJ, here's the best, okay? They get up, they say, we the jury find uh, OJ Simpson not guilty, and so everybody goes crazy, so you know you're cleared there. Yeah. The worst you're going to get is a small little assault and battery. You should have gone and just gone, wham, and well, say, okay, I'm guilty of assault and battery. What is that, 30 days? That ain't screw. Yeah. I've been in your ear, Time served. Time served. Edo, throw the gavel down right now, bitch. Time served. We're partying. Let's go. <laughs> OJ, I want to ask one question. Where did you go the night you were a free man? You had to go tie one on, brother. Come on. No, I didn't. I, I went well, home. Well, you probably see your and kids. Then before I, I was in shock. You know, you, you got to understand. In the courtroom, they'd never let me touch my family. Right. The only people I could shake hands with were lawyers. Right. And for 16 months, I hadn't hugged my mother. I, I talked to my kids twice a week from jail. I hadn't seen them in 16 months. But not even months. physically got to see them? Uh, no, I wouldn't let them come to jail and right. see me. Right, I understand. Like that. And so when I got home, all my friends showed up. Right. And all the lawyers came. And, uh, you know, they said that we had a big party. We didn't have a party. We had testimony. Everybody, we went around the room and everybody talked about how they felt, talked about God, right. thanked the Lord, we held hands, we sung hymns. Right. Of course, the media had a, we were partying, right, right, right. which wasn't the case at all. And it was weird being around so many people, you know? Because you were I in wanted solitary to get alone. Con- confinement yeah, for I wanted to months. get alone, and I called my in-laws and talked to them to get my kids. And then the next mo- day was all about sneaking out of Rockingham to get my kids. So I snuck out, and as people know that today, I spent, I, I spent the next three or four months at Don O'Meyer's house. Don is doing Monday Night Football again. Oh, right. Yeah, he's the guy producing. He was head of NBC at the time. Right, and, right. 
And uh, it so was he was interesting. cool. He he set you up for a little bit. Yeah, yeah. It was interesting staying at his house. My kids came the next day, and we played there. And for literally three months, nobody knew I was there. And I would see these reports outside of Rockingham uh, about how I was uh, Mowing depressed. The lawn and people or... were saying he was at his house. Friends would say he was depressed. I remember after my civ- uh, interesting story after my um, <clears throat> civil trial. The next morning, I went and played golf all day with all my buddies, right? And I'm sitting in the 18th, 19th hole of the bar. We're having drinks. And I'm watching TV, and the, the bartender, a female, said, OJ, look, you're on TV. So everybody in the bar looked at the TV screen. And there's a guy outside of my Rockingham house doing a stand-up. <laughs> and he's saying, yeah, well, the word is he's depressed. He's despondent. A few friends have been in and out. Uh, you can see how sad they look. Uh, not long ago, he came out, and he was petting his dog, and he saw us. And he looked a little disheveled, and he went right back into, into the house. <laughs> now, I've been at this golf course all day. <laughs> right? And all these guys are watching this saying, hey, man, what, what, what are they talking about? You're despondent at home. And there was this table of guys that I saw often at this golf course, older white guys who, you know, everybody's pretty cool with me, but these guys never really spoke or never did much. As they were leaving, all four of them came to the table and just shook my hand and said, hey, we owe you an apology and walked off. Didn't get, didn't, didn't they? Expound on it anymore. Right, but right. Just kind of shook my hand and said, man, we owe you an apology. Well, they saw what the media did. Yeah, you? and I think they realized then that a lot of the stuff that they were seeing and they were believing just wasn't true. Now, OJ, you're in town uh, because of Marsh, Lack, and Hamill because you got big stuff happening with those guys. Well, possibly. Leave it to Marsh, <laughs> Yeah, possibly. possibly. What we're doing is, you know, I'm doing interve- uh, you know, because I've felt over the years now, I never get a fair shake. Uh, from the mainstream media when it comes to interviewing. And I haven't really done any. I've gone to Europe and done a few, but... Uh, so we really are kind of privileged because, yeah. <laughs> really, I mean, a lot of people haven't been able to... Well, nobody's been able to hear a lot of this stuff. Yeah, yeah. you know, I did one thing on ESPN. Right. Strangely enough, when I went on that show, they told me they didn't want to talk about the trial at all, only sports. Right. And of course, when I was on the show, they never asked one sports, sports question. question. <laughs> but you know, it was all right. Sucks, I was OJ. able to clean up some things. And, and you know, that kind of uh, sucks a little bit, OJ, because... Uh, Take the well. It's 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 impossible to dis, to distance yourself from yeah. that whole that whole stuff. But people people quickly forget that you know you're one of the greatest all time rushers in the National Football League. So I mean, and and it's too bad that this the the, the uh, you know the death of Nicole has overshadowed the fact that you're a Hall of Fame running back that you uh you know that you rushed for over a couple thousand yards uh co- more than once was it like three no, ta- no, one, 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 two thousand well, the first guy to do it first guy to do it, and it 2000, 14 games I might add yeah, all the other guys games. have had 16 14 games the other three guys I mean, Dickinson, uh, Heisman Heisman trophy winner yeah. I mean you know and uh it, it's too bad that you know and a great broadcaster with Monday Night Football uh, her, all the rent-a-car stuff and all the stuff like that. Uh, on how many boards at one time were you on, uh, OJ? Six or seven. <laughs> Six or seven. Uh, pulling down Big Jack, being a man, and uh, and and then you know obviously uh, uh, accused of killing your wife and 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 found not guilty. And uh, it's 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 sad that uh, that your athletic stuff sometimes gets gets kind of abandoned because. You had a hell of a career. I mean, you were a hell of a running back back in the day, yeah. brother. Well, I love the game, and I love it now. I still talk to a lot of the active players. They'll call me for advice from time to time. And uh, <clears throat> my biggest challenge and the thing that I'm most proud of is how my two young kids are turning out right now. Now, is hey, Justin going to be a ball player? Uh, he's basketball. Loves. He's going to play football for the first time uh, this fall somewhere in Florida. <laughs> run, run, running back? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. He's big kid, fast, but big kid, but he loves basketball. Really? He's been an all-star in all the leagues. Going to be tall, you think? In. Yeah, he's going to be a big kid. Gonna he's a big tall. kid now. So they, they call him Barkley. <laughs> All really? the kids he plays with. Big ass Barkley, he's a big huh? Guy, yeah. now how about Sydney? She plays some stuff, doesn't she? She plays volleyball and basketball. Now, know? she's pretty tall, too. I mean, yeah, I, no, I see her on TV. Real tall. She's going to tall. She's gorgeous, too, boy. She's, uh, she's you know. She's yeah, wait till she turns 16 fate. and those she's little. She's going through that 12, 13. Now she's 14. And right. You see the swan coming out. <laughs> <laughs> wait till the boys start courting, OJ. You think you're nervous now? You're going to You think you got problems now? Oof. Now tell me about poss- Marsh Lack. What do you guys got? I mean, can you talk about possibly what you might be doing with OJ, or can we not? Or no? I mean, well, well you know, as you know, I'm a do. Uh, I want. I've always wanted to talk directly to the public, <clears throat> right? And uh, some guys came to me with an opportunity to talk, you know, over the internet directly right. to the public, field questions, and you know, talk directly to them. And as you know, uh, you know, Dave and these guys got one of the better operations on the internet. Oh man! They came to me and said, "Look at our operation that." 
we may be able to, uh, you know, do a better job for you. And that's essentially what I'm here doing. And I can imagine operation. everybody that's, that's hit you up for that situation. Of course, the Internet being as huge as it is now and you know, people making millions and millions of dollars from that deal. Uh, but, you know, I, I, to, to stick up for Marshlack and those guys and guys who've just totally made a lot of money at it and, yeah. do, and do it the right way. Uh-huh. And, and I hope that if you decide to go with Marshlack, I mean, I hope if you decide to do the internet deal, you go with Marshlack and Hamill. You just got to watch out for Hamill, because that <laughs> son of a bitch is goofy uh-huh. as the day is long. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to tell you right now, he, many a night, so he sat at my house when he was penniless and I had to buy him Taco Bell. He was my, he was my Cato back in the day. <laughs> I swear to God, let me tell you a story. I, did have the, I had the hair. Oh we my used God. to get in the jacuzzi. So we would get in the jacuzzi. That's a bubble be, it, compound. It would be February. It wasn't quite as nice as Brentwood, but it was. I was like in the white trash cracker compound. <laughs> and uh, and uh, one time, Hamill was so hard up that it was like I swear to God, it was like 35 degrees in Florida. My pool's not heated, and it, and the pool was probably 10 degrees. And Hamill was so down on his luck, and he had no money. Oh, I hate Hamill. This it's story. true, true story. I, I said, Hamill, story. I'll give you 25 dollars and a steak dinner if you jump in the pool for one minute. And I mean, the pool's ice. I mean, you know. Your poor testicles would just go right up inside you if you did it. Dumbass Hamill jumps in the pool and stays in for a minute for twenty five dollars and a steak and a steak and a steak dinner. That's how. Now that was a damn good steak. I remember that. <laughs> <steak. laughs> I'm telling you. Now that son of a bitch is a multimillionaire and still would do it for twenty five dollars and a steak dinner. Oh yeah, I do it for free. So uh, there's a Marshak possibility that you'll be getting OJ. Possibility. I, I think we're gonna do the OJ dorm. I think that would be the, the, the hit. <laughs> yeah, I'm a father. I can't do that. I got pictures of my kids and my wife. Oh, let me so. see. You got pictures. You got pictures of your kids. Just kidding. Actually, but we're talking about doing Ask OJ and PublicCrossing.com. Both of them. We have AskOJ.com and Public Crossing. Where OJ would go online go and online. like on a chat forum, right? And uh, and then some live could, cams, and he would actually you know, answer questions, and right? Take you know from from the people that want to know the the truth, you know, directly from him. You know, OJ, we got off the air a little bit. We were talking about uh, some stuff that the people didn't know about, and and I and I'm, I'm just so uh, you you've been telling me stuff, yeah. and, and, and and like for instance. Uh, I didn't know, and I and I want to ask you. I mean, I found some information out, and you can tell me if it's true or not. But I didn't know that, uh, and I didn't know this at all. That Furman had uh, the the city of Los Angeles using taxpayer dollars uh, used uh, paid off three different cases uh, that Furman had planted evidence on three different. There was three different attorneys that came to your people and said that he actually <laughs> the city of Los Angeles settled three different cases on Mark. Furman planted evidence trials and Edo, what and you guys want to enter that into evidence because the jury needs to know uh-huh. that. Uh-huh. And Edo said, "No, we're not going to allow that into evidence because he hasn't been proven guilty about nothing. It was a settlement." Exactly. Is that true? Not only was it a settlement, they 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 sealed the papers. What's interesting is uh, these people were fighting him in court and until they realized he was going to be a key witness in my trial. And the minute, and this is what their lawyers have told us. When they knew he was going to be a key witness in our trial, they had to clean him up. So the city attorney paid these people off, settled out of court for whatever reasons they'll say. They say it was more, it may have been cheaper to settle than to go try. to trial. Right. But the simple fact that this guy had been accused of this before we came along. So you guys and, weren't and, the first and people we, to yeah, say, and we, wanted, we thought the jury should have known that. Right. But uh, Ito wouldn't let us bring that up because, uh, as, you, as you know, um, um, Ito said that he hadn't been proven. And we said, well, we should at least be able to say that there were other people who felt he had done this to them. Now, but Ito said there was no evidence, really, that that happened because the cases were settled and the, and the records were, were sealed. So it wasn't uh, a grasp out in thin air, the fact that you guys, aren't, you guys were by far not the first people ever to say, hey, this is a corrupt son of a bitch, and he's got a reputation for planning evidence due to the fact that he'd already been on a possible suspect or on, on a settlement of three other cases prior uh-huh. that they just settled prior to having to put him on stand for you guys because they had to clean him up. Inevitably, to, to make it to make him sound more believable on your That's and Edo wouldn't let it go through. And you know, you got to understand, we didn't just come to the idea that Furman planted <clears throat> evidence. It it just all read that way. After a while, you realize he did everything. He found everything. Do you, and, now, and do you think it was that, real curious? You know, it, what I always found curious was you remember when they they were calling my lawyers all kind of names. This is a great cop. Marshall was saying, "How does your family feel, Mark?" <clears throat> uh, you know, that, you know, you've been attacked this way and, and it was dirty pool and then the tape came out. Now, you guys probably have never heard that whole tape. Oh, man. I mean, it was, do- they was all to be burned. Right. Oh, I, I love the smell of the 77th Street Station because it smelled like dead. <laughs> this guy says this stuff. And, you know, after we, we this was a com- complete, this was 
a miracle. This was from the heavens that this tape shows up. How did you get you know, it, OJ? They were How'd saying that he never said the word, never did. Then all of a sudden, this tape shows up, and you got him in his own words saying these horrible things. I always said it wasn't really important that he used the word. Everybody's used the word. You know, right. everybody has. Let's right. be honest. There. Exactly. But it was the content in which he used it. He was asked on this tape. If you saw a black, because he had said he didn't like black guys on this with tape, white he women. Said, he right. says on this tape, right. well, what would you do? The girl asked him, well, what would you do if there was no reason to arrest the black guy? He says, I'll make up a reason. I plan a reason. He says this if he sees on a black this guy, tape. A black a guy girl, with a white girl. He would make he up would a reason. He would make up a reason to arrest this guy. Now, this is his words. Everybody said, well, he's uh, he was writing a script. <laughs> Role the play. girl said he wasn't. it wasn't about him writing a script. She saw it was real, but people forget we had four or five witnesses, white women who took the stand, who said Furman was in their house for 15 minutes and they asked him to leave because he would go off on the, on these racial tangents. Right. Now, the point I'm making is what's with a guy within 15 minutes of meeting some lady, he's talking about blacks and right. he's talking, you know, he's this animus is coming out of him. These were live witnesses who came into the courtroom who knew nothing about a tape. So the woman telling about their experience, even his first wife said, on their first date, he made a racial comment, and she told him, my family don't mm. believe in that. And to his credit, she said he never brought it up to her again. Right, right. But what's with a guy that on his first date with people, he's he's going off on, on blacks and Hispanics and, and, you know, using the N-word and stuff right. on his first date with women. So the Remember the lady who testified that she kicked him out of her apartment in 15 minutes? <clears throat> Her roommate was dating his partner. He sat in the room, saw a picture of someone, a black guy in her, in her apartment, right. and went off, and she told him to go wait in the car. People forget these people testified in court. Now, the woman <laughs> that had the tape that you guys used had only known Furman for 15 minutes? When no, he... I, don't, I don't know about her, how long she oh, knew right, right. because they worked on the tape, but she said she, he would come and talk to her because she was on her right, computer. Right. And, but we, we ended up with this tape which was, to me was a miracle. Like yeah, how did, you, how did you get that tape, O.J.? And when you got it, you had to think, once you heard the tape, O.J., can you remember how I you, thought the trial was over. I you, thought I mean, they would drop oh, yeah. charges. <laughs> I really did. And that came at, like, what, 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 part the, what part of the trial? Well, it was after he testified. It was after a whole lot of stuff. After Lee Bailey did the job he did on him, everybody said Lee did a horrible job on him. But turned out Lee told me when he sat down, you just wait. And when this tape shows up, I mean, it I, made I, let, me say, let me say this. Let me say this. I know, and I feel in my heart, if if you would have uh, used what he said about blacks on this tape, if he would have said that about Jewish people oh, yeah. on this tape, you never see him going on these talk shows now. You would never see him having his own radio show. Well, the Jewish community is so they much They would never let him get away with, uh, with you know, being, um, I, I see on, they got him as a uh, consultant on some movie they're about right. to do. Uh, Especially uh, in Los Angeles with the yeah. Jewish community running all the studios. In New I mean, York, and I mean, running all the, oh, there's yeah. no way, if you replace, you know, uh, the word with whatever <clears throat> Jewish negative, right. uh, whatever right. uh, negative word that you would use, they would never allow this guy to be going on all these shows now. Now, sit, sitting here today, how do you feel about Mark Furman? He wants to beat his ass. Now, you know, Mark, <laughs> it's funny, when I got a, my, my animosity, my animus, Mark's problem was long before me. This is something that people are raised with, I, I think, oh, racism. Yeah. They're raised with, and I know that you just it, it may not even brunch. be his fault. <laughs> you well, no. well, my biggest animus a... goes to people like Faye Rusnick and uh, right. mm -hmm. people like that. Out of all Mark. the people, OJ, that were in yeah. this whole big dilemma, yeah. you know, from the, from the Darkens to the Marshes to the Edos to the, to the Faye Resnicks, it's only human nature because all of them tried to bury you, OJ. Yeah. They all tried. They wanted to see your ass in jail forever, and you know it. Yeah. Out of all of them, O.J., which ones have been the biggest ant? Was it Faye Resnick that have been the biggest oh, wow. Well, I, 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 I hated Faye because she pimped her a friend of hers, and she purported to be, and all for money. Uh, I think Denise Brown did the same thing. She lied on the stand, and she pimped her sister for money. I mean, they, they sold pictures of their sister. You know, uh, to the media. You know, um, the uh, the bad pictures of the of the uh, autopsy. Pictures, I mean, no, of, no, no, of the no, murder scene. Pictures and they set my kids up and took my kids to Sea World and alerted the National Enquirer and people. They'd be there. So my animosity goes <clears> more to those people than than um, you know what most people would say. I mean, I I, I don't like Marsha Clark. I think she's um, I think she, I, I admire her passion. But I don't think you can. Uh, she's dishonest. I mean, right. she, you know. So I mean, I can you like a person you know is dishonest? How hard? No. Uh, but I, I, if I saw the, you know, I ran in. I ran into a couple of police officers, uh, Furman's partner, uh, Phillips, guys who I and 
I spoke to him when I saw him. Hey, Mr. Phillips. Hey, Mr. Simpson. Uh, right, right. How's your golf game? Whatever, whatever. I mean, I'm not a guy to carry a lot of animus with him. There's two or three people I'm not going to get involved with now. Right. Uh, that I'm not going to mention now that I do have a lot of animus for. But Furman is not the main guy. What you know? uh, <laughs> Out of the two trials, OJ, which one was harder on you? The second one. The, the civil? Because the civil was. But the first one, was my allowed. life was on the line. I understand obviously. that. And I was dealing with a lot of issues. The second trial was uh, we had a judge that even the other side said it was just such an illegal process. I mean, they were able to get away with stuff that you never should get away with in court, and that's why I'm I'm in appeal, and I, I feel very confident that this that it has to be overthrown in appeal. For instance, there's a law that you can't be sued more than your current worth. Oh, I was okay. worth nothing. I right. was worth nothing. <laughs> right. And I mean, you were bottom they, of the barrel at that yeah, point. Yeah, at that point, and they they, they gave me a million. Thirty-three million dollar judgment. What do they that's come up with that that's figure? That's illegal. What do they come up with that <laughs> because figure? Because they put okay. a guy on the stand who didn't know me and know anybody. <clears throat> right. And he was a guy who did memorabilia. And stuff. Oh, okay. This guy Fujisaki let this guy testify that my future income on memorabilia and stuff would be three million a year, and over a certain night seventy-five million dollars. And the jury did the thing on seventy-five million dollars. And we're sitting there saying, "How can you let a guy? This guy doesn't know." You know, and I even told my lawyer, even told a guy that Mr. Simpson will let you have 90 percent <laughs> of this money if you represent him and deliver these kind of funds. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Simpson, Mr. Simpson will kiss your ass yeah, and give you yeah. half an hour to draw a crowd yeah. if he can make 75 million, million real fast, in my lifetime. What do I sign up for that yeah, program? Yeah. And they, he allowed this guy to get in front of the jury and tell his, you know, based on what? <laughs> And yeah, there's no parameters as yeah, to yeah. as to how hot uh, yeah. O.J. Simpson memorabilia is going to be. But what does future income got to do with it anyway? Well, it doesn't. I mean, yeah, yeah, now, with a lawsuit. And, and so the bottom line is, and I'm, I mean, we're in a pill. So Go- Goldman's got to he's got to understand one thing. Like, first of all, if there's been anybody that has turned this into a media circus, I haven't liked the guy yeah. from day one. Okay, he's turned it into a media circus with his with he just he's an wow. My personal opinion, I don't care if anybody thinks that you did it or didn't do it. You, you cannot necessarily condone his behavior. Secondly, well, well, he, yeah. you know he used the kids as a pawn and tried yeah. to you know try to do all that kind of crap and, and stuff yeah. like that. And and the bottom line is he has to realize that a smart man like yourself that's got good good advice and good investors can you can. You can you can keep the money away from him. So why does he have to be so adamant about it? The fact that you know, you, you, whether it be uh, whatever how you do it, you know, he's got to realize that he's not going to get a dime. He's not going to get well, a dime. Well, and they try and take you your know, Heisman. That yeah, was crappy. Yeah, that yeah. was about as crappy as it gets. In the history of of, of, of jurisprudence, no <laughs> athlete or anybody who's been sued by their wives and divorce have had trophies taken. <laughs> now, it really does no they, value. Did they really on those take things. it, OJ? Did they take it really? Yeah. Yeah. That sucks. Yeah, well, it doesn't bother me. Well, no, I know, <laughs> but just I'm mean, just a sports fan. It was winning it that mattered. Right. Know? I mean, it's just now yeah. it's just a symbol. I and mean, the my, guy who bought it is really a big fan of mine. I've talked to him a few times, and I just want to give it back to you. Said, "Here, Juice, yeah. on the reverse Abidal, yeah. my yeah. boy. Let me just get a picture with you. Sign me up a couple pictures, and, and we'll go a couple <laughs> wow. bars. Is what I'm saying. To you. <laughs> Juice, I wanted to thank you, man, for you know for for setting the record straight, mm-hmm. at least for the little bit of time we had to be with you. Mm-hmm. And I mean, is it is it common knowledge that we can say that Juice is looking for homes in the Miami area? Can we say? Well, not, you, well, the media has already <clears throat> written it all over the place. <laughs> I mean, I mean, but you I know, am moving to Florida. You talked I am about, definitely moving to Florida. I mean, you talked so. about the fact that Justin will be playing football in Florida. Yeah, I uh, believe he will be. I and mean, now, will you just completely say, uh, "Screw LA," and I'm coming to Florida? You know, I was actually moving to Florida um, uh, ten years ago. I was moving to Florida right when Nicole and I divorced. I was moving to Florida. My house was for sale. I was spending <clears> more time in Florida, and then one day Nicole showed up, wanted me to take her back. Right. Uh, and I wasn't going to do it. I was still moving, but over the next three months, he convinced me to give it a shot. So I gave it a year shot, and I put off moving to Florida, but I even she knew that at the end of the year, if we do stay together, I'm moving to Florida. Right. When the year was over, I told her I wasn't working. And that's another fallacy I hate. Everybody saw oh, he was jealous. He, this lady and her best friends will tell tell you this, was doing everything to get back in my life, <laughs> you know, right. um, uh, at that point in time. And, and I was moving to Florida then. That month, I was down in Florida looking for places, and she was murdered. And um, now, OJ, know, that put it off again. In closing, OJ, and it wouldn't be very long-winded, I mean, uh, I know that you have uh, 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 different types of rewards set up for information leading to. Do you have a, a, a philosophy as to who may have? Yeah, but you got to tune in to the I my internet interview. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, nice. but, Nicely promo. But, but you do have one. I mean, you, you do. Yeah, I have a theory. I have a theory right. what took place, and I, I have some. Well, you know, 
And obviously it's tough because the police, see, I, in my mind, if the police, when, for instance, in their first interview with Faye Resnick, when they went out to check on the things she said and found out she was lying, they should have put pressure on her to find out, your friend was murdered, why are you lying to us? Uh, they didn't do that. When they saw Ron Ship lie on the stand, they went out and know he was lying. <clears throat> They never put pressure on these people. They continue Even to today, focus you on see you. me today when I had this group of guys trying to get these phone records. Right. Look at the, look, look at the problem it was getting these phone records. Right. 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 I mean, if if if, if we're wrong and they're right, they should have said, "Here, look at this phone record. You're wrong. It's over." But these guys, this group of guys who've been after this phone records in California, they've been to four or five different courts, the Texas and everything, trying to get the Browns' phone records. And uh, everybody say, "Oh, there's nothing to it." I saw Petrocelli on TV saying, "There's nothing to it." If there's nothing to it, why are they missing? Why are they the only documents missing out of the evidence mm -hmm. that Hodgman took? And why don't the Browns tell the you know general telephone, hey, yeah, let them see it? Because the minute we see it, there's no more the debate. That shows you that the phone records, of course, the ongoing dispute will show the time frame that you did call, yeah, which, it, which is completely whacked from the limo's <laughs> testimony. Yeah, well, that's the theory of this group of guys right. who are getting it. Mm -hmm. I really didn't buy into it originally. Right. And the only reason I bought into it now is the fact that I, I, I'm shocked that it's so hard to get these phone records. Yeah, I mean, you know, again, Something if, this simple. if nobody has anything to hide, sure. why can't they say, here's the phone records, here's the time of the calls, here's the time that O.J. called, here's the, you know, and blah, blah, blah. The last time that she spoke to Nicole. Exactly. Um, it should be no problem, but it seems to be a problem. As I said, it, it was not a theory that I believed in, and the only reason I, I <clears> give it any credence is the fact that they're so adamant about not showing the phone records. Black bitch, I want you to meet my friend here now. This this is your big been your biggest supporter. <laughs> Hello, ma'am. I know that's not your real name. No, it's not. Well, we call we call her she and she like and OJ. She did, she likes being called black bitch because she represents <laughs> the black bitch community out there. Yeah. But she has been she during this whole ordeal. She we I damn near got in fights. Yeah. We're not gonna start calling him Bubba Furman. No. Oh. <laughs> okay. There you go. There you go. That was long. I have been a big supporter of you from day one. Thank you, sweetie. I got it. Right. I get now. I, I even yeah. found out you were coming this morning. I fixed you a special lunch. Okay. Well, okay. I look forward to it. I, I forgot you know. to bring it, but they wanted to know. They wanted, they wanted to know what you might like, so I told them a little collard greens. Yeah, you know that. Some pig feet and well, some crackling may, cornbread. But I know you probably graduated, but you know what? I'm doing a little fillet for you. How about it? How about it? And uh, and again, like you said, in closing, you know, if Mark Furman would have. Uh, uh, called uh, the Jewish community, especially as strong as the Jewish community is in in, in L.A. They run the studios. Yeah. You know, call them uh, uh, whatever the what, what, what we call. Oh what no, he, he would. He would certainly. He, would, he not, wouldn't be on a talk show tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. and he, you know, he had the, the gall <clears throat> to invite me two weeks ago on his radio show. Oh, I wish he would have gone there and just kicked. You know what I said? <laughs> I said, you know what, Mark? I tell you what. We'll do a no holds bar tough man competition, and if you if you whoop my ass, and I, then I'll have to agree to be on your show. But if not, I'm just going to beat your ass down, <laughs> yeah, yeah. and we'll call it a day. Hey, OJ, man, I, you know, I, I appreciate you coming in and just telling us a little bit of stuff that you know we didn't know about, and I can't wait for – I know Marshlack and uh, Hamill will get that deal done. Just watch out for that goofy bastard. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> uh, he is your Cato, though. Yeah, I see that. <laughs> that's, your, uh, that's your cracker Cato. But, uh, man, thank you so much for stopping by, OJ. And, well, uh, thank you. I and, enjoyed uh, it. As you're in the uh, Miami area, Tampa area, if, if you're doing business with these guys, you'll be up in Tampa. Let's go out and do some dinner. We need to take juice to the, uh, to the Salt Rock over there at Frank's, get some good-ass food going. Anybody needs to take pictures, let's get pictures. But let's also get juice out of here because it's a media circus, circus frenzy. And, you know, those damn 20 percent are out here again, OJ. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, don't get mad at me, yeah. but them 20 percent yeah. are all up in this bitch trying yeah. to get crazy. Yeah, Court flew in with me last night, and he saw it on the plane in the airport. He said, Jesus, these people love you. 20 percent, bitch. Said, but no, it's that 20 percent. 20 percent. If it's this the 80 would show up, we wouldn't have any problems now, would we? Yeah. O.J. Simpson, man. You, thank you very, very much, O.J. Take care, and, Tampa. And, uh, and, and please uh, stop by or call or something like that, and I look forward to working with you guys and Marshlack and Juice. God love you, brother. Thanks for stopping by. All right. 11, you the man.